So I saw this new paper called Playing with Quantum Computers, and it really talked about the difficulty of learning and teaching quantum computing. Classical mechanics, for example, is totally natural for us because we see it around us every day. But quantum computing and quantum mechanics, we can't see that, so it's not really that natural. So I thought it would be a great way to cover some core basic concepts of quantum computing using games. So in this video, we're going to go through and actually code a game of quantum penny flip. However, there's a key component here and we will make it so Alice will always win. This is a great introduction to quantum gates and the math behind them and of course I'll link the paper below. And we're going to use the IBM quantum experience here for the demonstration of the gates because it's a nice visual. If you don't have that set up yet, check out my other video here and you can actually set it up there with me. So first let's talk about the steps of quantum penny flip. So number one, Alice takes the penny and prepares it in some state in a box where nobody else can see it. Number two, Bob decides if he actually wants to flip that penny. So he's going to figure out whether he wants to apply an X gate to it or not. Number three, then Alice can apply any gate. And number four, we measure the outcome. But is there any way that Alice can always win this game of quantum penny flip? And it turns out that the answer is yes. We can actually make it with quantum penny flip that the initial state of the qubit will always be the final outcome, no matter what Bob does. The trick is that Bob can only bit flip the qubit, which means apply an X gate, while Alice can apply any gate that she wants. And that includes the Hadamard gate, which is a key concept in quantum information science. What the Hadamard gate does is actually apply a perfect superposition to a qubit, which means that when you measure that qubit after a Hadamard gate has been applied to it, as a 50% chance of being in the zero state and a 50% chance of being in the one state. So here's the winning strategy for Alice to use. She needs to use two Hadamard gates, one in the preparation and one after Bob does his X flip or not. And this way she will always win, no matter what Bob does. So here's the sequence of possible qubit operations in this quantum penny flip game. So we start with an initial state. Here we have the zero state. Alice prepares the qubit with a Hadamard gate and applies that H gate to it. Then we see in these two, either Bob flips the coin or he does not flip the coin, which means he applies the identity gate when he doesn't flip it. That doesn't change. Then Alice does another operation and she applies the Hadamard gate. And after that, we do the measurement. And this is how a lot of quantum circuits work. You first start with the preparation, then you do the operations, and then you actually take the measurement. So let's look at this using the IBM quantum experience and we can actually visualize it on the block sphere. And remember, you can always run these on the quantum chip with actual noise, which means the outcome won't be perfect, but it'll be close enough. So this is a good measurement of how quantum circuits actually work. So first, let's start with a quantum penny flip, and here we have the IBM Quantum Composer. So we have one quantum register and one classical register. So here, we're starting with the zero state initially, and what we can do is prepare the state with a Hadamard gate that we talked about. You could drag it here. So you see down here, the probability here is that it is 50% and 50%. Then Bob decides if he actually wants to flip the bit. Let's say he does. So we're gonna take this and apply the X gate to it. And you see the line here on the open chasm side. You see when he does his bit flip, the probabilities here don't actually change. So then Alice applies another Hadamard gate here. And what happens? Now we see this has changed and we're going back to 100% probability of having the zero state. Now, what if we replace it instead of the X gate? What happens if we put the identity gate into it? The identity gate is here, so we can drag it and make sure to delete this line. Same thing, right? You see the probability still remains in the zero state, which is our initial state of 100%. Now, what if Alice wanted to start with a different initial state? Well, we can bit flip at the very beginning before she does her preparation with the Hadamard gate. So here we prepare it first in the one state. We do a bit flip from the zero state and now it's in the one state. So you see it's a probability 100% of being in state one. Then we do the same thing. We can apply a Hadamard here, another X flip, and another Hadamard. And we see at the end, the computational basis, the probability of being in state one is still 100%. So no matter what Bob does, whether he bit flips or does the identity gate, Alice will still win at the end. She'll always have the right answer at the end. The right answer means that she knows that the final answer will be the exact same as the initial state. So whether she starts with a zero or a one, the last state will be a zero or one as long as she follows the Hadamard sequence here. Finally, let's look at the actual math behind this and why this actually works. Let's write out the initial states and the Hadamard gate.
Now, the first step for us as Alice is to apply the Hadamard gate to our initial state. So let's pick the one state. Now remember your matrix multiplication here. So one over the square root of two in the front, and the second part here, one times zero plus negative one times one. So here we go. And that equals one and negative one here. So this is the state we have after Alice applies her Hadamard gate. Now we need to decide if Bob is actually going to flip the qubit or not. So if he does flip, he applies the X gate and this is what the X gate looks like. So let's say Bob does flip. So then let's apply the X gate to the state that we already have. Again, we do the matrix multiplication here. So then what we want to do is Alice wants to apply another Hadamard gate. Let's calculate that out. So then we can actually take this vector here and actually divide it and get out a global phase. So the global phase here, the factor doesn't actually matter. So now what we actually see here is that we got our initial state back out here. So what if we don't actually apply the X gate? If we don't apply any gate, we actually apply the identity gate. The identity gate doesn't change the state. So then let's go back to one of our initial states here where we applied the Hadamard first and take this don't apply the identity gate or, you know, ap apply it, but it doesn't change it. So we have this state here that we start with, and then we apply another Hadamard on top of it. So now, as you see here, again, this is the same initial state that we got here, which is again, the initial state that we started with at the very beginning. So you see with the math, this all works out. So I hope you enjoyed this game of quantum penny flip. So now if you ever have to flip a coin, suggest that maybe you do the quantum version and you can always win. If you like this video, please thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. That helps me a lot. And subscribe if you want more videos on quantum tech and coding.